here, but do business here. How do you tax them? And so when you take an Uber ride, or when you, or, or when you uh, book through hotels.com, or bookings.com, or you use Airbnb, these are good innovations. It's good innovations globally, it's good innovations locally. Uh, the issue is that when you have an economic activity in a country, you must pay taxes in that country. But if you are not there to pay those taxes because your business is not registered there, you don't have a representative there, nothing. And you are able to do business in that country and get away without paying tax. Now that is a global phenomenon, and that is part of what is being discussed. But whilst we wait for that, how do we deal with the tax losses as a result of that? And that is one of the key issues that we must and should be discussing here. But then, of course, that's global businesses, but there's uh, digital businesses, but there's also the taxation of uh, what they call other forms of intangible. And so when a normal multinational company, a digit, digital or not, engages in your country, and before they declare their profits, they are able to deduct before profits interest and interest on loans, um, they can deduct service fees and technical fees for intellectual um, and other inputs that come from outside your country, they can deduct these from their profit before they pay taxes. Then you begin to have a problem if you do not have rules that govern them, because it allows those subsidiaries, those African subsidiaries of these companies to strip out their profits and before they then declare their profits, they then pay a vast reduced tax. And so they can end up paying as a corporate company in Kenya, in Uganda, in South Africa, they can pay an effective tax rate of 3% after they've made all those deductions. But they must compete with the same company that sells cars or clothes or makes things that is based in Kenya or Uganda or Liberia, who pays 30% tax. And so that local business starts at a huge disadvantage. And so part of this whole discussion must be about how do we change the way we tax the economy because the world of economics has changed. I think that is uh, um, um, the one part that I would like to, to share. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, just a follow-up question. Um, you Really looking at the digital economy and looking at the space that we're in now in the digital era, I think it sort of emphasizes how we need to ensure that the strength of our tax infrastructure within African countries is solid and sound. A lot of the issues that my colleague here mentioned are pertinent to ensuring that African countries can capture their fair share of tax revenues that are generated through the digital economy. But then we have to ask ourselves, do we have the capability? Um, and so looking more at tax administrations and saying, okay, can the digital, the digitalization of tax administration really um, enable us to be able to better capture the tax revenues that accrue within the digital economy, as well as other um, income streams that we fail to really capitalize on currently. At the moment, Africa, and with, the, with I'd say about 15% of, um, of uh, tax ratios to GDP, and um, we find that although digital trade is growing in Africa, it's been estimated to be about 40% and, and growing um, on an annual basis, there's still a failure for African countries to truly try and find exactly how we can better improve um, the tax capture across several different sectors and how we can actually optimize the digital, the digital economy technology to ensure that we can shore up our domestic revenue organization. I think going forward, we will need to be thinking about how we can develop a digitalization strategy on a national level. The African Union has taken this uh, topic some way. Um, earlier this year, they looked at um, the digital transformation agenda, um, which they're working earnestly to try and um, to, to try and sort of um, promote throughout the region. And I think this is something that as we move through this conference, we're trying to see, okay, what are the critical areas that can actually be used as pillars of a digital strategy for African countries to refer to and to actually identify where the key leakages are recurring. 
Um, I'd also like to say that um, from the UN perspective, this conference is very um, relevant and it's come at an opportune time. The United Nations Interagency Task Force for Finance and Development is preparing the 2020 Finance and Development Report. The key theme there is in disruptive technologies. And so they'll be looking at how disruptive technologies has hindered or progressed um, a country's abilities to better improve their domestic resource mobilization capabilities. And so as we go through this conference, I think it's really about trying to find solutions, trying to find options that are responsive to the needs of African countries and, um, and see how we can take this forward in, in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to um, uh, re-emphasize <laughs> Uh, I think four points, and, and uh, building up from the, I think the brilliant uh, submissions from both Logan and Zume on, on this. And, and the first point is that uh, the rules we have now on taxation are not fit for purpose. Um, they are updated rules when you look at how the economies globally and even in Africa are uh, operating. Most dominant economies or the most dominant companies today are not companies that are brick and mortar. They are digital companies. One of the largest companies, as you might know, Amazon, the world, a trillion dollar company, operates largely virtually. So as the world changes, in, in the context of, the, of Africa, how are our rules, particularly when it comes to tax, how have they been designed or reformed to be able to capture revenues? from uh, the, the increasingly digitalized economy. I think that's one point that is important to, to re-emphasize. The second is that digitalization, as much as it brings a lot of benefits, has its victims. And you know the fights we have had in many different countries on about how it is basically crowding out your formal registered taxi companies um, and coming in with more competitive um, operators such as Uber and Taxify and others, and this is disrupting uh, some of the, creating an uneven playing field. Uh, the same applies to Airbnb, we talk to hoteliers that are suffering huge losses because they are those that have, have apartments or uh, operating cottages in Mombasa for the Kenyans in the room and others, and all these companies are operating outside the tax net and creating an playing field, playing field uh, and an even um, field because they are not paying taxes and as opposed to companies that are operating the, in the, and that are paying, that are paying taxes. So that I think is the second point uh, that is really important to, to, to emphasize. The third point is that you can't tax uh, an increasingly digitalized economy using <coughs> non-digitalized operations. So how are our revenue authorities, they themselves, digitalizing their operations to be able to capture revenues from the digital economy? And this is going to be a, a, a central piece, of, uh, a central pillar of the conversations we're going to have. We are seeing a number of revenue authorities across the continent trying to introduce different uh, digital platforms to be able to capture operations um, uh, or transactions from a business that is happening uh, uh, online, virtual, uh, virtual, virtual operations. So, the digitization of revenue institutions and, and government operations in general is, a, is an important is an important piece. Of course, this, this will be balanced vis-a-vis -vis the um, data issues of privacy and for those in Kenya, of course, you know, the whole conversation we've been having about uh, the Doma number. And all these, I think, are, are interrelated issues that we will be unpacking at, the, at this conference. And the last uh, point that I would like to emphasize before I over to Jane, is that by the virtue of their structure, digital platforms are more prone, and I think that's the point that Logan uh, made very clear, that because of the way they are structured, digital platforms are more prone to tax evasion and tax avoidance. So this whole the conversation we're having about how the continent is bleeding, how much revenues we are losing as a result of tax evasion and tax avoidance, this problem is going to become even more bigger when we focus on an increasingly uh, digitalized economy. And here we see a problem 